Okay, so, picture the Great Pyramid. What pops into your head? Tombs. Pharaohs. Right, like, that's the classic image, this massive ancient tomb. But, uh, what if there's more to the story? Like, what if it wasn't just about burying Pharaoh, but about something energetic? Okay, I like where this is going. We're diving into a 2022 paper from Remote Sensing by Filippo Biondi and Corrado Malanga. These researchers, they use this really cool tech called SAR Doppler tomography. It basically lets you see inside the pyramid. Kind of, but in a totally new way. Yeah, it's not like your typical x-ray. It's way more about picking up tiny movements, vibrations inside the structure. Exactly. And they got some seriously interesting images. Absolutely. They show a standard diagram of the pyramid's insides, you know, like the king's chamber or queen's chamber, those spots. And they overlay that with this color-coded map. And that map, that's the exciting part. Because it's not showing solid stuff. It's showing the intensity of these microscopic movements, vibrations happening within the pyramid. They even have a separate image that just shows this raw tomographic data. So it's like the pyramid is transparent, but only to these micro movements. It's wild. Super wild. So instead of an x-ray showing dense objects, this tomography shows how the pyramid reacts to these little vibrations, these seismic waves that are always moving through the earth. Right, like listening for the echoes of tiny vibrations instead of sound waves. And the colors on those maps, they tell you how much activity there is. Blue is low, then it goes through green and yellow, and red is like, whoa, a lot of movement there. Exactly, and they highlighted three specific areas in the images that they found particularly interesting. Yeah, those are key. So what we're doing today is we're going to really dig into what those images are telling us, and we're going to explore this pretty out there theory. Could the pyramids have been like part of a network to transmit energy? An ancient power grid. Kinda. Like, think Tesla and his ideas about wireless power, even tapping into the Earth's natural electromagnetic field, what's called the Schumann Resonance. Okay, so we're looking at the pyramid not as a tune, but as a machine with inner workings. And not just any machine, something sophisticated, maybe way ahead of its time. Exactly. And as we go through this, we'll also touch on the roles those obelisks might have played, those tall structures all over Egypt. Like, could they have been receivers in this energy network? And then there's the Ankh, that ancient symbol. Maybe it was more than just symbolic. Maybe it was like a tuning key for the whole system. Okay, I'm hooked. Let's break it down. So first, the Great Pyramid itself. Inside, there's the King's Chamber, built with granite. Now, granite, this is interesting. It has a property where it can make a little electrical charge when you squeeze it or vibrate it. Piezoelectricity. Right. And then there's the Zed, those chambers above the Queen's Chamber. There's the Queen's Chamber, the Grand Gallery with its crazy overlapping walls, and that unfinished room way down below. And the way they used Sardoppler tomography to see all this, it's clever. Instead of trying to shoot a signal through the stone, they're basically listening to how the pyramid responds to these natural vibrations. Yeah, like using the Earth's own energy to scan the pyramid from the inside out. Yeah, exactly. And they mapped it all out in 3D, showing where those micro-movements are most intense. And that brings us to those three areas they highlighted. Box 1, up at the top, includes the Z in the King's Chamber, and it's red and yellow on the map. So lots of movement up there. Makes sense. You've got the weight of the whole pyramid pressing down on those granite blocks in the King's Chamber. All that pressure, combined with those constant vibrations, could be generating a significant piezoelectric charge. Right. The pyramid is basically squeezing its own power source. And they found that those 2.5-ton granite blocks in the King's Chamber, they're placed with incredible precision like down to the millimeter. Which might not be just for structural reasons. Maybe it's about fine-tuning the resonant frequency of that chamber. Totally. And then you've got the VED right above the King's Chamber. The paper suggests it might be acting like, like a filter, only letting the very low-frequency vibrations through to the King's Chamber. Like a low-pass acoustic filter, specifically tuned for something like that. The Schumann resonance, that 7.83 hertz frequency, the Earth's electromagnetic heartbeat. Exactly. Okay, so we've got potential energy generation in the King's Chamber, maybe tuned to the Earth's frequency. What about box two? That's the Queen's Chamber, and it's showing a moderate amount of activity, greens and yellows, on the map. So maybe it's not generating energy on the same level as the King's Chamber, but perhaps it's acting as a secondary amplifier, taking the resonance from the King's Chamber and boosting it further. Right, like another stage in this energy system. And then there's Box 3 down near the base, near the grotto. It's a mix of colors, a more complex pattern of movement. And there's this white arrow in the image pointing along a corridor towards that unfinished room way at the bottom. A pathway for what, though? Well, if we're thinking about energy flow, maybe that corridor is a grounding pathway. To connect the energy generated within the pyramid to the Earth itself, to the planet's magnetic field. Completing the circuit, stabilizing the system, so we have potential energy generation, amplification, and grounding. But what about transmission? How does the energy get out of the pyramid? 
Let's consider the Grand Gallery. The paper mentions it could have been part of a hydraulic system moving water around, but if we're following the energy idea... It's a huge space with those sloping, overlapping walls. Right, that core build design. Maybe it's not just a passage, but a waveguide. A waveguide. Like a tunnel designed to direct and focus specific types of energy waves, like a fiber optic cable does with light. Imagine those electromagnetic waves generated in the King's Chamber being channeled up the Grand Gallery. Towards the top of the pyramid and then outwards. Exactly. And the Queen's Chamber, remember it's pretty high up, almost at the apex, maybe it's a final stage of amplification before the energy is transmitted out. And that unfinished room, connected to that potential grounding pathway, it all starts to fit together, doesn't it? It's a compelling narrative, for sure. But how would this energy have been used? Where would it go? This is where I think those obelisks come into play. Those tall, slender structures all over Egypt, you've got them at Luxor, Karnak, Heliopolis. And they're often made from granite just like the king's chamber. Plus, they usually have that pyramid-shaped top, the pyramidion, often covered in gold or other conductive materials. They do kind of look like antennas, don't they? It's not a bad analogy, and their height would make them very effective at receiving electromagnetic waves. And granite being piezoelectric, Maybe they weren't just receiving the energy, but converting it into something usable. Possibly. And the fact that they're often placed near water, like the Nile or Temple Lakes, is also interesting. Water is a good conductor of electricity. So if the pyramid is like the central power station sending out this energy, maybe the obelisks are like receivers picking up the signal. Strategically placed receivers tuned to the same frequency as the pyramid. And get this, there's research that suggests the Great Pyramid isn't perfectly four-sided. It has these subtle indentations, making it effectively eight-sided. Eight-sided. Yeah, very slight. But if you think about it, those facets could act like a lens, focusing the energy beams outwards towards specific obelisks. Wow. Okay, so we've got the pyramid generating this energy, the obelisks potentially receiving it. But how do you make sure everything is tuned correctly? That's where I think the onk might come in. The onk that ancient symbol of life. Yeah, but maybe it was more than symbolic. Maybe it was a tool, a resonance key used to tune this whole energy network. Okay, I'm listening. Look at the shape of the onk. You've got the loop at the top. Maybe that represents an energy source or connection to a resonant field. And the cross-shaped part below, maybe that's about channeling or using that energy. Interesting interpretation. And you often see the onk held up near someone's mouth, the breath of life. Could that be about activating an obelisk, aligning its resonance with the pyramid? like a tuning fork. Exactly. Remember, if the pyramid is resonating at a specific frequency, maybe the Schumann resonance, the obelisks would need to be tuned to that same frequency to receive the energy efficiently. And maybe the onk, because of its material or shape, was used to fine-tune those obelisks. So those rituals they did around obelisks, maybe they weren't just symbolic. Maybe they were using the onk to create vibrations, maybe even using water from the Nile or a musical instrument like a sistrum to precisely tune the obelisks to the pyramid's energy signal. It's a fascinating idea. And that corridor in box three, the one that might be part of a hydraulic system, water plays a huge role in resonance and conductivity. And the onk is often shown with water. Exactly. So maybe it wasn't just symbolic, but a practical tool used in water-related rituals to further fine-tune the whole system. Okay, but all this sounds super advanced for the ancient Egyptians, right? But then you think about Nikola Tesla. He was obsessed with wireless energy transmission. He believed the Earth itself was a giant conductor. And he even said that ancient civilizations might have understood these principles, maybe even the Egyptians. And his Wardenclyffe Tower project, he was trying to build a global wireless energy network. Tesla thought wireless power wasn't just possible, it was a fundamental part of the universe. And he looked at ancient structures, like the pyramids, with their precise alignments and math, and wondered if they had a technological purpose we've forgotten. And the thing about Tesla's work is, frequency was everything. For energy transfer to work, the sender and receiver had to be perfectly in sync. Resonant inductive coupling. He showed it with those two coils, remember? When they vibrate at the same frequency, energy flows wirelessly between them. So maybe the pyramid and the obelisks are like those coils, and the onk is the tuning mechanism. And when you see that intense activity in the kings and queens chambers on the tomographic image, it makes you think that the pyramid was designed for resonance. It does make you wonder. Okay, but the paper itself does talk about a possible hydraulic system in the pyramid, with that corridor in box 3 being a clue. Right, they suggest there might have been water flowing through the Grand Gallery and into the chambers. So, how would water fit into our energy network theory? Well, water can really amplify resonance. It's a good conductor of electromagnetic waves. 
and the Nile River being right there next to the pyramids. Maybe that's not a coincidence. And again, the obelisks, so many of them are near water. It's all connected. If the Ankh was used in water rituals, that supports the idea of a water-based system for tuning and amplifying this energy. And remember, the paper also talks about the acoustic properties of the pyramid. Water would definitely affect that too. But we do have to acknowledge the mainstream view here. Most Egyptologists say the pyramids are tombs, obelisks are religious symbols, and the Ankh is just a symbol of life. A lot of people are skeptical about these uh, more out-there ideas. Of course. And to be fair, there's not a ton of hard evidence to support the hydraulic system theory, and those micro-movements they saw could just be natural seismic activity, not something the Egyptians were harnessing. And the idea that they had wireless energy transmission without any obvious park left behind, it is a big leap. Plus, the human residence, it's a very low energy level. Could they really power anything with that? It's a valid question. We are applying modern ideas about electricity to a civilization that didn't seem to have that knowledge in the same way we do. Right. But, I mean, the Egyptians were incredibly advanced in other ways. Math, astronomy, acoustics. Maybe they had an understanding of resonance and energy that we're just starting to rediscover. And that's what makes this so exciting. If any of this is true, it changes how we see ancient technology. It suggests a lost science, a way of working with the planet's energy that we've forgotten. It's like Tesla's dream of free energy for everyone, tapping into the Earth's power in a way that's sustainable. And this tomographic image, it's not just a picture, it's a challenge to rethink what the pyramid was for, to look beyond the tomb idea and consider these more energetic possibilities. Maybe by studying the pyramid, especially those internal structures revealed by this new imaging, we can learn new things about wireless energy transmission. Maybe there's something there that can help us today. A lost technology waiting to be rediscovered. Kind of like the renewed interest in Tesla's work. Exactly. So what we've done today is we've explored this new look at the Great Pyramid, not just as a tomb, but as a potential part of an ancient energy network. Using obelisks as receivers, the Ankh as a tuning device, all based on principles that Tesla was exploring thousands of years later. We looked at the evidence, the vibrational activity in the pyramid, the design and placement of the obelisks, the possible function of the unk. It's a lot to consider. And it raises a huge question for you, our listener. Did the ancient Egyptians know something we don't about harnessing the Earth's energy? And if they did, what could we learn from them? What could it mean for our future, especially when it comes to finding new sources of sustainable energy? Maybe it's time to look into Tesla's work, the Schumann Resonance, and the possibility that ancient civilizations were far more advanced than we give them credit for. Think about it. A cosmic machine built thousands of years ago, maybe still humming with energy right beneath our feet. It's pretty mind-blowing stuff. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. Until next time.